in uh, with a quick prayer. Um, thank you, Father, for allowing us to gather this morning and look at your word. I just want to invite your spirit to come upon us and speak to us and allow us to hear better as we look at your word. Pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, as I was preparing for today, um, I got reminded of a um, scenario from when I was a kid. Um, just imagine this, as a family, we're about to go on a vacation. I'm full of joy and excitement. Um, I jump in the car and everything is just perfect. Um, about five hours into the journey, which in reality is 30 minutes, <laughs> the adrenaline which had skyrocketed has landed back on Earth and now I'm just bored. That's when I start goofing in, around and trying to entertain myself, uh, doing best as I can. If my brother is in the car, um, I'll start annoying him because that's funny. Um, and about 60 seconds later, I'll get shouted by my parents from the front seats of the car. Um, on a good day, they'll repeat between two and ten times. Um, quickly after that, what will follow if I continued was to be grounded um, for a part of the holiday that we're on. And they'll normally repeat with every stop that we take for a break um, and yeah um, that's the time when um, the famous question are we there yet pops out um, the, or how long do we have the answer is typically soon uh, which helps a lot uh, maybe some of you had similar experience uh, in their childhood um, so yeah, uh, now we're going to look at our sound today, which is sound 90. Um, as you're opening your Bibles, um, I'm just going to give you some info about the text we're going to look at. Uh, some of you might notice that the, it's titled The Prayer of Moses, the Man of God. Uh, when I first read that, I was uh, not really sure if that was regarding the same Moses that led the Israelites out of Egypt. And I assure you, it is. Um, he has been assigned to him because of the language that has been used uh, as an intercessory prayer, which really fits great in his lips. So, let's, let's have a read. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you have formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You return man to dust and say, Return, O children of man, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when is past, or as a watch in the night. You sweep, sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like a grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades away and withers. For we are brought to an end by your anger, by your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our day pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength, 80, yet their span is but toil and tremble, trouble. They're soon gone, and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? So teach us to number our days, that we may get a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. 
satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad in all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be shown to your servants, and your glorious power to their children. Let the favour of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Amen. Um, just to give you some context, um, while we let those words soak in, um, commentaries tell us that the, the time of writing this prayer is very likely to be the time recorded in Numbers chapter 20, where three main things happened to Moses. First of them is that um, Moses performs a miracle, um, and then he fails to honor God, which leads to his ban from the promised land. The second thing that happens is that he tried to cross the, the land of Edom with the Israelites, um, and the king, of, the king of Edom doesn't allow them to cross their borders. And even then, he goes after them with powerful army. Um, and the third thing that happens to Moses at the time is that his brother Aaron passes away. Um, you can imagine the difficult time that Moses was experiencing at that time. Um, recently, um, I've experienced uh, a hard season myself. Um, it was about a year and a half ago uh, when me and Lena boarded on a journey with God, um, which was the easily the hardest year of my life. Um, I struggled. I, I was constantly angry. I uh, suffered from depression. I was not understanding God. I felt let down from God. And I felt like God was ignoring me. I was simply unhappy. Um, so I constantly wanted that to quit that journey along the way as well. Uh, similarly to what happened when I was little in the car. After I get bored, after I got grounded, I was like, oh, I just want to give up. It's no point. I'm not going to have fun anymore. When I go when I reached there, and I think, I feel like Moses was maybe uh, experiencing the same thoughts uh, at that time, and that brings me to, to what um, uh, brought me to this psalm, was uh, Moses' quote, Return, O Lord, how long? In verse 13. Um, but I've noticed a few things that Moses does in his difficult situations. Um, the first one is that he remembers who God is and what he's done in his life in verses 1 to 6. Um, then he acknowledges that human life is temporary but God is internal. He humbled himself before God and asked for wisdom. And then he prays and seeks happiness from God because he is the one that makes things happen. These are very helpful points, but they don't tell us why we can experience hardships in our lives. Sometimes our life in lead us to a situation like this. We just want to give up. Um, so I just want to read a few uh, passages which help me understand better what's going on in my life and why God is allowing this to happen. Uh, the first passage is from Hebrew 12 uh, verses 5 to 11. 
which says this. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and um, uh, ah, I forgot how to pronounce this word, chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have been participated, then you are illegit illegitimate children and not sons. Beside this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and, and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, and it seems best to them, as it seems best to them. But he disciplined us for our good, that we may share his holiness. For the, mo for the moment, all discipline seems painful, but rather than pleasant. But later it yields the, the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. This gives us explanation that God is just treating us as sons, as my father was doing when uh, I was being naughty. Um, the next passage is in James 1 verses 2 to 4 which says the following count ye all joy my brothers when you meet trials of various kinds for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and the steadfastness uh, have its full effect that you may be perfect complete and lack nothing amen and these are just few examples from the Bible which tell us that God is um, more focused on our character and building our character up other than our happiness at this moment. So I'm going to share with you some uh, thoughts, um, some points that help me through that difficult time. First of them was uh, sharing my thoughts with my close uh, people. Uh, another thing was attending my explore group. That was really helpful, just being able to share with, with people from the church um, what's going on in my life. Um, the next thing was prayer. Not only praying to God, but also receiving prayer. Uh, that was something that was propelling me forward. Um, the next thing that really helped me was to seek wisdom um, from your leaders, uh, mentors. Um, and the last thing is uh, humble, humbling. Um, a good example of humbling yourself, practicing uh, fasting. That's something which I could clearly see results after the fast. Um, and yeah, so I just want to remind us that God owes us nothing. Um, in reality, all we deserve is his wrath because of how we behave individually and globally. We tend to repeatedly make mess of things, make bad choices, and act selfishless. Um, our God is strong to anger, is slow to anger, and abounding in love, full of grace and mercy. But even then, justice must be done, so that his wrath must be satisfied of our sins. 
That's why to help us he sends Jesus to die for us and pay the debt to satisfy God's wrath. Not only that, but he also sends the Holy Spirit to help us navigate through this uh, messed up world. Not, not only that, but he, he also gives us the church a place um, um, a place of belonging, a family. Um, so I just want to finish by um, allowing us to remember that when things are not going right, not as we've hoped or we planned, that just coming to the Father and saying, Father, I'm in distress. You've already done so much for me. And you don't owe me anything. But I'm troubled by this or that. And I seek your help. But your will be done. So, um, I just want to lead us uh, in prayer for those of us who are in difficult part of their life at the moment. Our Father, thank you for everything that you've given us. Thank you for everything that we already have in you. Thank you for sending your Son Jesus so that we may come clean in front of you and ask for help. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to help us and navigate through life. Thank you for giving us the, the church, a family in our, where we belong, where we could feel welcome and understood. So I just pray for those of us that you give us um, patience, to give us strength to, to stay in that, to stay in you and trust that you are Lord and all of that will be for our good. In the name of Jesus I pray. Amen.